monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. LinkedIn presents. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Catherine Bell about how we can build thriving, healthy organizational cultures in challenging times. Catherine Bell, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, John. It's an honor and privilege to be with you today. It is a pleasure. You're joining us from the Calgary area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about how we can build thriving, healthy organizational cultures in challenging times. Now, I will say having thriving, healthy cultures is always hard, regardless of the the challenging times or not, but it just becomes extra difficult when you're in times of hyper change and disruption and all, you know, not just business disruption, economic disruption, but social upheaval and geopolitical upheaval. Like we live in challenging times. And so it is very challenging to build those thriving, healthy organizational cultures. This is what we're going to unpack together today. And as we get started, I wanted to share Catherine's bio with everybody. Catherine Bell is a successful entrepreneur, business leader, and best-selling business author. She founded Blue Era, Profit 500 executive search and team transformation company as a top 200 growing company in Canada, top 10 in Alberta, and best workplace. Blue Era was a shining example of the awakened company system in action. With the sale of Blue Era to DHR, Catherine now focuses on awakening the fire within organizations through strategy with Soul Consulting as founder and CEO of The Awakened Company. In 2022, Catherine was identified as one of the top 10 innovative CEOs revamping the future by Inc. Magazine. And I could go on and on, but I'm going to pause there. And Catherine, I want to give you a minute to share anything else about yourself, your background, your personal context before we dive on into the conversation. Thank you very much for inviting me into that. And I think there's a piece of me that I would love everybody to know, and that's that I'm a mother and people don't often talk about it. And yet when asked um, what my superpower was at an event last week, I said my superpower are my family and friends. So I would invite everybody to start thinking more broadly in terms of who and what they are. And with me comes my family, my friends. I'm also a poetry writer and I'll have a poetry book coming out. So there's so much more to each one of us. There's so much um, of a beautiful story that's just waiting to be told. So I would invite everybody into those vulnerable parts and to start telling those stories because often we don't hear them. We think, oh, business, you know, and I think our system of business is really being revamped. And that's really exciting to me, John. So I invite everybody to consider and, you know, maybe send me an email. Let me know what's interesting and enticing about your story, because it's in hearing the truth and reality of our stories that we become, we all become more whole. 
For sure. I love all of that. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing a little bit of, about your your personal life and, and your own uh, personal successes. They all connect together, right? And so often within the workplace, we kind of compartmentalize and we focus specifically on you know work at work and home at home. And I don't know about you, but for me, it all bleeds together. Um, and and I want to have you know appropriate boundaries, of course, and not have things interfere with my family, etc. But but it, it just it's, it's connected so deeply to everything that I do. Um, and you know, longtime listeners of the podcast know I have six children. I'm uh, proudly married for 20 plus years and, uh, my family is my life. So I do lots of cool things at work. I, I love what I do, but my family is first and foremost, always. And Catherine, it sounds like, um, that's something that we share in common. Very much so. And family for me is a foundation. And it's a foundation from which everything else can build and thrive and be energized like a healthy, like a healthy forest. And I would also, um, a number of my team are like family to me. It's just like a different taste, a different syrup of love that's with appropriate boundaries, of course, um, in the workplace. So we often don't really want to talk about love in the workplace. Yet I think love is so kind of foundational to creating healthy workplaces. And it's a different kind of love than let's say with my husband, with our kids, with our aunts, uncles, grandparents, I've 10 God kids. Like if that's a different form of love in our workplace. It's like, how do we bring that love that is omnipresent to work? So, for example, one of my business partners is Russ Hudson. He's a thought leader in the Enneagram in the world. And uh, we're partners. And there's so much love in that partnership. There's so much love in that partnership with Sherry. We care about each other. And in that caring and interest in the other persons and in the interest of best interest of the other people, healthy things are grow, grow from it. Yet often in workplaces, we kind of get scared about that L word. And I would invite us all to really look at what our impacts can be. So when we think of an awakened company, the pillars are awakening ourselves, relationships, team, organizations, community. So the first drop, if we were to have a drop in the ocean, the first drop in the ocean is awakening ourselves. So how do we awaken ourselves? So I'd invite everybody into mindfulness, contemplation, self-reflection, knowing, using the Enneagram, knowing what our strengths and and work-ons are, having an aim, having an intention for our world and for who and what we are. So here, those are some mini hacks for how do we awaken ourselves. And I think we need to keep on coming back on what, how do we improve? Because the research shows, as I'm sure you know, John, that the more self-aware we are as leaders, the higher performing we are. So to keep that awakening drop of ourselves, keep it going. Then the next ring of the awakening company or an awakening organization is our relationships. And our relationships are the secret sauce to activating culture. And knowing how to be in relationship, like one simple hack for CEOs is, um, writing thank you notes to your team, positively noticing other people, catching each other in the act of doing the right thing. And then it reinforces all the other things. And how are we building heartfulness in our relationships, spaciousness in our relationships, and also mindfulness in our relationships? And our relationships, the moment um, we ignore people, their behavior goes down. The moment we call somebody a follower, their behavior goes down. So, and the more we positively notice another person, engagement goes up. It improves the relationships, which is like the cultural glue that holds the actual whole organization yeah. together, right? And the most, the most engaged group of people are those who are positively noticed. The most that are disengaged are those who aren't noticed at all. So much there. Um, I, I want to highlight really quickly, you know, what you were focusing on on the outset around love. Um, now, that that's a scary term for a lot of people in a lot of contexts. And, and certainly in the workplace, it's not one that we throw around all that often. And I guess I would suggest, regardless of your feelings around the use of the word love, 
in the workplace and with your team and 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 all of those things the the principles you know, upon which that exist uh, are are incredibly relevant regardless of whether you use the word or not <laughs> so it, like you said we we need to notice people we need to be present with people we need to care genuinely care about people um all of that to me is love and whether we use the term or not uh, we, we need to be doing those things that's what generates that uh, mutual accountability and trust within your teams it what 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 creates that uh the durability the the uh commitment uh in the loyalty on a team where people are having each other's backs and when you have hyper competitive workplace environments where everyone's just trying to get ahead uh you can inadvertently actually undermine the performance of the team and the organization because instead of cooperating and working together to to help the organization as a whole people end up kind of in onesies and twosies doing their own little thing and creating factions. And then you have to spend half your energy just dealing with organizational politics rather than just doing the work that needs to be done and doing it in a cool way. So caring about your people, trusting your people, uh, empowering your people, all of these things are elements of what I would call workplace love. And again, whether or not we use the term or not, I think it's important for us to acknowledge that. Very much so. And I would also underscore, I use the word spaciousness in our relationships. And you use the word trust, which is incredibly powerful, because the moment we don't trust people, it's like imposing a whole tax on the system, it slows everything down. And the more spaciousness, sports spacious, we can be with people, the more we give them autonomy, to do what they want, the more loving we can be with that, uh, the higher performing people are. So it's an interesting juxtaposition, right? So we need to give people autonomy. They need to know what to do, not how to do it. And if they don't know how to do it, they can come to you. They can figure it out. But how do we give people autonomy? And that autonomy is also a form of love. And now that we're kind of taking this love route, let's go on to like the team. When we think of teams, you know, often I'll meet with leaders, John, and they won't know their vision. And I can't tell you how common this is, and you'd think it wouldn't be, but it is so common. And to have a vision as a collective, as a team, is a form of love, because that vision is your intention for the future, your positive intention for the future that you're embodying in your daily actions strategically today. So unless you have that clear North Star, that clear vision for where you're going as an organization then everything becomes muddy. I don't know if you found that in terms of your work, but that's been a kind of almost a surprise to me. And it keeps on being a surprise because there's so much data and literature about you've got your vision, your values, your missions, and yet it isn't actually being actualized. So I think there's this knowing doing gap and to not have a vision is not loving for your team, for your your. Yeah. You're the collective. What are your thoughts, you know, on that? Would, are you seeing that? It's super common for organizations to have that, that mission statement, the vision statement, um, to even have some strategic priorities. And oftentimes they'll even put it on their website. Uh, the, the question is, are you actually following it? Are you actually doing it? Does the, where the rubber meets the road, are you walking the walk or are you just talking the talk? Right. And that's where, you know, obviously some organizations don't even have an articulated mission and vision statement and those strategic priorities, that's a good place to start. But if you stop there, it doesn't really do much either. I mean, I, the number of times I've seen um, leaders and teams and organizations, you know, spending so much time wordsmithing those, those phrases only to then, you know, they end up on a banner on the wall, they end up on the website and they don't really influence much of anything moving forward. It's, it's heartbreaking to see the amount of effort that went into that, the amount of thoughtfulness that went into it. And then there's, it's actually not systematized or integrated into the organization at all in any way that's actually going to help you achieve, you know, uh, that, that mission or, or the vision that you have for your organization. And I completely agree that if you want like the, the truest form of love and compassion that you would have for others, whether it be, you know, at home with your family or whether it be within your organization and your team is you want them to maximize their potential, right? I want my kids to be successful, have the best possible, happy, healthy life possible. Now that, that doesn't mean I'm 
prescripting everything that they do. It doesn't mean that I'm telling them in order to be successful, you have to do what I say. That's not what we're talking about at all. But you create that healthy environment where people can thrive, where they can learn their talents, um, they can develop themselves, where they can grow into themselves, uh, whether it's at home or in your community or at work. And that becomes really powerful. And that is that is the truest form of deep love, I think, is 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 helping those around you to fulfill their potential and to, and to become who they're capable of becoming. Uh, that's certainly what I want to try to do as a leader. Of course, I'm not perfect. I'm sure I fall short and, you know, sometimes undermine that intention. But if we have that intention and we, we strive daily to, to enact it and then have some intellectual humility to be able to practice self-reflection to recognize when we're maybe not quite getting there um, so that we can make improvements. Uh, I think that's, you know, if, if all the other stuff, if we put all the other stuff around leadership and org change and, and org development and all those sorts of things, lots of best practices, lots of great principles. But if we set all of that other stuff, stuff aside and we just do what we're talking about here right now, it's going to make a huge difference for most organizations and for most people in those organizations. Monetizing digital services since 2004. Boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. Very much so. And I'll tell you um, a story of my um, my failure, actually, as a leader around vision, which is one of the reasons why I talk about it so much. So it was uh, in one of my former companies, I said to the team, you know, this is our vision. Like, you, here's our vision, get on board, you know, here's our vision, here's our vision. And then we brought in somebody from Denmark to work with our team uh, because we were doing things that hadn't been done in North America before. So we wanted an outsider's perspective to kind of add to our vista. And he asked the team, what is your vision? The entire team. And I'm like, oh, the team's got this. They know what it is. We've just been through this two weeks ago or whatever it was. And... Nobody raised their hand. Okay, so John, I started to cry and I cried myself to sleep that night. It was awful. It was like an epic leadership failure because what I realized is it's one of Margaret Wheatley's principles is people support what they create. So instead of doing what we had planned with that leader in Denmark, we actually did vision together and created a vision together. And then nobody, everyone remembered it. But more importantly, everyone created it. So there's something about the creation together. And then we did things to reiterate. And this is another thing in terms of the knowing doing gap that um, we did things to reinforce the vision so that it wasn't just kind of a banner on the wall. It was lived and breathed every day. We did things like at the beginning of meeting, people would tell a vision story or value story to kind of embed it into our work. We would choose people based on um, did they believe in our vision. We would have values in terms of uh, performance evaluation. So everything was kind of baked in. So on the one hand, organizations need to um, establish this vision. So energize, have a vision, also have very clear metrics for how to actually get to the vision. So very clear action steps, because ultimately strategy is action. And the moment we forget that is we're lost. Like what you were saying, bang on, John, like just bang on. Strategy is action. So what are the little micro steps every day we can take to enable our vision? So one of our visions is to reach a million people. So part of the reason I'm on this podcast is to like, okay, this your community will help Um, even if somebody could walk away with one thing from this podcast, that's meaningful to me, to us. So how do we, what are our goals? How do we achieve them? And then also to celebrate. I don't think there's enough play or fun in our organization. So energizing is part of that is play and fun and celebrating as a team and also individually when we get things right. So that's one pillar of the Awakening Company is to energize. The other two are uh, sustain and regenerate. So sustain means, okay, following up on our goals and objectives, living our values, also putting the structures in place that are aligned with 
our strategy, our vision, our goals. And then the, th- the third part of, so that's uh, sustained. The third part is to regenerate. And that's the part that's often missing in companies. And regeneration is about giving people a chance to breathe, to innovate, to create, to have peaceful moments. So this is like bringing yoga into the office, having meetings in nature, just giving one. Another thing I did that we did is we had unlimited vacation. This was over two decades ago. And it really allowed that whole regeneration piece to come into being so that people could be fully present. And it also told people that we trusted them. So that's the the invitation is what energize, sustain, regenerate. And I've described those pillars and for companies to really bake those into their organizational being. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think you raised some really great points and provide some really good examples around the the importance there of igniting passion and purpose and engagement and and helping others to be bought into it. So it's not enough for us to just recognize it or as a leader to to be our, to be able to articulate it, but you got to bring others along with you. You have to meet them where they're at. You have to involve them in the process. Uh, you have to engage with their passions, their purpose. Uh, if you hope to to have the kind of input or the the kind of impact that you've been des- describing and that we hope to have within our organizations. Catherine, I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in a few minutes, but before we wrap things up for today, I thought maybe we could lead or excuse me, we could finish uh, with a bit of a discussion around uh, what leaders specifically can do to try to have strong, healthy and professional relationships at work to create this type of a, a positive, thriving, healthy organizational culture. One, there's a few things. So leaders, number one, have your aim. What is your intention? And to live that intention and to live that intention in every interaction that you have. And just so you know, when I say leaders, I am meaning everybody. I am meaning everybody. So even that is a fundamental shift. Everybody is a leader. Everybody in every organization should have their own aim and connect it somehow to the vision and values of the organization. I also believe we need to begin with the end in mind. So I think everybody should write a eulogy and then live from the place of their eulogy would be an invitation. And every day think about what's the kindest thing I can do. And also what's the smallest thing I can do to um, live our vision values and where we are as an organization. So that was just a whole bunch. John, the underlying The underlying message, though, is it's one thing to think about creating a healthy organization. It's another thing to feel, oh, what's the feeling I want in the organization? Next level is actually doing and being that in organizations. So that's the invitations every day. You know, often leaders that we work with, they say, oh, people think we are an overnight success. Well, that's not true as a whole bunch of micro actions guided from our heart and head that enabled their success. So the invitation for everybody is to really small, small actions filled with love and kindness and, and it will, it will lead you on the right path. And the path isn't always easy. I'm not going to tell you that it's easy. It's not. This is an inner journey with external uh, consequences. Yeah, very well said, Catherine. This has just been a pleasure. Uh, I encourage the audience to learn more about Catherine and her team and what they can do for you. As we wrap things up, Catherine, can you just share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, and then we'll have a final word and finish things up. Yes. So there's an organizational survey you can do for free that's on our website. So check that out. Uh, Our newsletter, we provide, our newsletter has a ton of value for leaders. So sign up to our newsletter. LinkedIn, please go to my LinkedIn. Please go to Awaken Company. Awaken Company is also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So join us. And I really see a lot of our social media as community service because we give away hacks all the time. Like they're very practical. So sign up for our social media and you'll get a lot of uh, helpful hints. Uh, And also if there's something that you have a question about, don't hesitate to engage with us because we'll respond 
and I will respond directly. Wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. It has been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Catherine and her team can do for you. Let's strive to build healthier, thriving organizational cultures, ones that are sustainable, ones that empower our people to do their best work so we can create great stuff and provide value to the market and just treat our people well with dignity and respect. That's my hope. I know, Catherine, that's yours. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.